بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم As to what follows my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from you all and to grant you success and goodness in this life and in the afterlife. My brothers and sisters in Islam, there is absolutely no doubt that the greatest surah in the Quran is Surah Al-Fatiha. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, hiya sab'u al-mathani wal-Qur'an al-azim al-lazhi uti tuhu. He said that Surah Al-Fatiha is the greatest surah in the Qur'an that was given to me. And it was the greatest surah in the Qur'an because within this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a few words, He mentions what our purpose in life is. Why were we created and why were we put on earth? And that is found right in the middle of Surah Al-Fatiha and it is known as the central ayah and the central message of Surah Al-Fatiha and that is قوله تعالى إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين You alone we worship and you alone we seek your help. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the entire Quran is an explanation of this ayah. إياك نعبد You alone we worship and the entire Quran is explaining how one worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are supposed to read this surah 17 times a day, at least. And so 17 times a day we are reminding ourselves of this great fact. So indeed it is a calamity. If you read this 17 times a day, and up until now, you haven't understood its deep meaning and you haven't pondered over it. So in the minutes that I have with you, I wanted to share with you this ayah, what it means, and how this ayah can connect us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said to you, this is the central message of the Quran. If you understood everything and you never understood this ayah, you really did not understand the Quran. So it is worth that we go through this ayah and explain what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and what are we supposed to understand. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this ayah is made up of two parts. I'm going to first explain the first part, then the second part, and then I'll connect the two parts to you so that you can see how they connect and the correlation between them. And by the way, when we're reciting إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ we're making this declaration. You alone, O oh Allah, we worship. And you alone, we seek your help. We're making this declaration in a salat, which is the most noble deed in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. And in a salat, all the reasons for focus and concentration combines. Because in a salat, you're upon wudu. You're facing the qibla. You're looking into your place of prostration. You're not allowed to move left and right. You don't eat, you don't drink, you don't talk to anyone. And these matters, if combined, then a person is at the peak of concentration and at the peak of focus. So it is at that position that Allah Azza wa Jal would command us to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And from there, we're saying, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ So that means it is incumbent upon the believer to understand, Allah put you in a position where you are freed from worldly distractions so you can understand this covenant between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. 
So the first part, Iyaka na'bud. And that, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is the purpose of life. This is the purpose of life. We were only created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word na'bud, it comes from the word abada. And abada also comes from the word abd. And abd is a sleeve. So na'bud doesn't only mean that we worship you, O Allah. It means another thing. We are going to worship you alone and we will enslave ourselves too. There's a difference between being a worshipper and a slave. A worship is a service. It is a specific deed done at a specific time, like Al-Hajj. Al-Hajj has a start time, it has an end time. Al-Salat has a start time, it has an end time. But being a slave is not restricted to any kind of deed. Being a slave, you're a slave 24 hours of the day, seven days of the week, non-stop. So, Iyaka na'bud, you're saying, Oh Allah, I declare that I will worship you alone. And in the times I'm not worshiping, I declare that I am a slave of yours. This is a full-time job. One of the ulama, rahimahumullah, mentioned that la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah is seven words. And it is made up of 24 letters. Because la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah is a 24-7 job. Iyaka na'bud. This is the purpose of life. We will worship you and worship you alone. And my brothers and sisters in Islam, we were created for the worship of Allah. The heart was created for the worship of Allah. That's what it was designed for. It was created to fulfill La ilaha illallah. So the more you fulfill the purpose of life, the more you adhere to the worship of Allah, the more you adhere to La ilaha illallah, the more you will get out of your life because you're living your purpose. And the further away you are from your purpose, then the more anxious and worried and concerned you will become. Like a fish. A fish was created so it can be in the water. If it was removed from the water, what happens? It begins to tremble and shake. It's out of its environment. It wasn't made to be outside the water. And if the fish was put back in the water, it glides and it sails smoothly. It is relaxed and it's comfortable and it's at peace and tranquility. Why? Because it's in its environment. And in the same manner that human being, when you are in an environment of iman, in an environment of worship, when you hear the call to us salat, you pray. When Ramadan commences, you begin. When Al-Hajj is called and you finally have the means, you go. When it's the morning, you make dhikr of Allah. When it's the evening, you make the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. When you're in consistently in that environment of worship, you're like that fish in the ocean. Your heart is at peace, tranquil, and things are good. And if you're away from worship, and you decide to turn away, abandon as salat abandon al-hijab, abandon the fasting, and abandon the many types of worships that we have, then you have chosen to be that fish outside the water. The anxiety you get, and the worry and the concern and the troubles and the shakes and the tribulations are because of what your hands has done. You brought this situation upon yourself. You alone we worship. The heart was created for worship. For la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Iyaka na'bud. Na'bud is a present tense. And present tense in the Arabic language, it implies continuity. Yani iyaka na'bud means, oh Allah, we will continuously worship you and enslave ourselves to you. This is not a matter of today and tomorrow and then I'll take a break and then after that I'll jump back on. Na'bud continuous. The question is, until when? Until when are we going to continuously worship Allah? Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said in Surah Al-Hijr, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord until certainty reaches you. What is certainty? 
There is nothing more certain in life than death. So keep worshipping until death arrives to your door. Once Malak al Maut arrives to your door, worship is no longer required. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Wallah, there will come a day where you will no longer hear Adhan al Fajr. There will come a day where Salat al Dhuhr is no longer required from you, while Asr is no longer required, fasting Ramadan is no longer required, dressing Islamically is no longer required, and all the worships are no longer required. That is the day your soul comes out. So there is, there is a day where you'll have a long break from a salat. But until then, u'bud rabbak, worship your Lord. This is iyaka na'bud, continuous worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, what we understand when we read iyaka na'bud, we realize that this is going to be a difficult task. I need to worship Allah until the day I die. Allahu Akbar. That seems very difficult. It seems very heavy. That's going to be a struggle. I can't even plan for it. If I wanted to sit and think, am I going to pray five daily prayers until the day I die? Imagine I die at the age of 60 or 70 or 80. Meaning from now until then, how many thousands of salat am I going to pray? If you think like this, you really do come to the realization that worship until death is no easy job. This is a difficult matter. It requires a lot of commitment and patience. So the idea is, how many people do we know that have given up on righteousness and given up on steadfastness? and given up on al-salat, and given up on al-hijab, and turned to this worldly life and its desires and its glitters and its glamours and its distractions. How many people do we know, right? What happened to them? They found worship a struggle and a burden. I can't do this. This is not for me. So they left al-Islam. And I ask, did that solve any of your problems? Did leaving Islam pay your debts? Did it solve your calamities? Did it get you married? Did it relieve you from the problems you had when you were in Islam? Well, it didn't do anything. It absolutely did nothing. So you abandon Islam. You've abandoned your purpose. It is going to bring you a lot more trouble in your life. So you realize this fact that it's going to be a difficulty to continue to worship Allah. And my brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal chose for the Kaaba to be built in Mecca, in a rough terrain, rigid, sharp, and jagged. No vegetation, no crops, no nothing. Why? This is to teach you and I that if the road to the house of Allah physically is a difficult one, then the road to Allah spiritually is also a difficult road. It's a difficult road. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Huffatil jannatu bil makarih. That the, the paradise has been surrounded with hardships and difficulties. It is a struggle to make wudu every fajr and get up and pray. It's a struggle to pray five times a day. It's a struggle to continuously wear al-hijab every day when you come out of your house. It is a struggle to fast Ramadan every year. It is a struggle to give zakat every time. There is difficulty in these matters. Even when Allah spoke about worship, He used very big terminology and heavy words. He said, He said, strive and struggle in the cause of Allah the way He deserves it from you. See the word, shahidu. In Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا those who strived and struggled for us. See the words he uses? When Allah described the salat, he said, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةً He said, indeed, the salat is huge. It's a massive burden. إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Of course, except upon those who have attained khushu' in their hearts. But otherwise, it's going to be a heavy, difficult matter. 
if the Quran itself, Allah described it and said, Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. If the Quran itself, Allah described it and he said, O Messenger of Allah, we're going to reveal upon you a heavy word. Imagine, if the word is heavy, imagine then applying its laws and legislations. How heavy and difficult is that? And the worship of Allah doesn't only mean to obey his commands, it also means to keep away from the prohibitions. Keep him away from a zina. That's going to be difficult because the nafs desires woman. It desires the opposite gender. It's going to be difficult. That's also part of worship. Allah Azza wa Jal, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, when he described a man that gets up at night and makes wudu, he said, يَقُومُ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ يُعَالِجُ نَفْسَهُ إِلَى الطَّهُورِ يعالج. He fights and he struggles against himself to get this wudu going. Even when reading Quran, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَالَّذِي يَتَتَعْتَعُ فِيهِ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقْ لَهُ أَجْرَانِ The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who stutters when reading the Quran. See, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam acknowledged that even reading the Quran will be a difficulty. Then he said, وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقْ And reading the Quran is a burden, it's heavy, it's a difficulty upon him. For such a person, there's two rewards. But the idea I'm telling you is that all these words about worship were very hard words, teaching you and I that the worship for Allah Azza wa Jal is indeed going to be a difficult matter. But my brothers and sisters in Islam, I get amazed at some people when they ask, brother, I'm struggling on the deen. I'm struggling to pray. I'm struggling to commit to al-hijab. I'm struggling. I answer and I say, well, congratulations. Whoever said it was going to be easy? Of course it was going to be a struggle. What did you think? What did you assume? يعني? You assumed otherwise? You were wrong. You're now feeling a burden because you had a wrong understanding. Of course it's a struggle. Most definitely. There's a lot of blood and sweat and tears and pain and suffering. But I tell you something. See these words I used? Replace them all with the word sabr for Allah Azza wa Jal. Every worship you commit to and you feel pain and struggle, that's actually what sabr upon the worship looks like. And the people of the paradise only enter the paradise because of their sabr. That's it. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says to the people of the paradise, he greets them, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be upon you because of the patience you had. And patience is upon the worship of Allah. And you need patience when keeping away from sins and prohibitions. Yes, lowering the gaze requires patience. And that patience is rewarded for. Don't think that if you lowered your gaze, a moment of pleasure and satisfaction I just missed out on. You took reward. That required patience. The woman that wore the hijab and came out of the house and then the drops of sweat that rolled down her neck in the summertime while wearing this hijab and covering this body for Allah, these drops of sweat could be the reason for why they extinguished the fire for this woman. These are sweat, these are drops that are being rewarded for. Each one of them is being recorded. And that, my sister, is what patience upon the worship of Allah looks like. So don't leave your deen because it's difficult. Obviously it's difficult. Obviously there's a struggle. But the reward is great at the end. The reward is the paradise. The reward is meeting your maker and your creator and seeing him subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that moment, every struggle you went through will feel like nothing would feel like it's the best thing you ever did in this life. On the day of judgment, you'll realize that the best investment you ever made for yourself were the moments in which you worshipped Allah, were the moments in which you remembered Allah, were the moments in which you sat between you and yourself and you said, Astaghfirullah, 
Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Well, the moments in you sat by yourself and you cried from the fear of Allah, remembering La ilaha illallah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, seven categories are under the shade of Allah on the day of judgment. One of them is a person who cried from the remembrance of Allah. And the greatest remembrance of Allah is the Qur'an. Crying when reading the Qur'an is a reason for why a person is placed under the sheet on the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters in Islam, that's the first part, iyaka na'bud. Now we realize that this ibadah and this consistent ibadah that is required from us, it's a struggle and it's a difficulty. So the next part of the ayah, وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ That is the means of how you're going to remain steadfast upon the purpose. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ is your purpose. But oh Allah, how? How am I going to remain consistent upon the worship? Allah gave us the key. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ And you alone we're going to seek help from. Even when you seek help from Allah, the worship will become easy بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى you will manage. There is difficulty, but you will manage to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and remain committed upon this. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ is the means to attain the purpose. The, mean, the, the, the means وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ is teaching you. If you believe that you're going to face this worldly life on your own and rely upon yourself, and if you believe that you're going to worship Allah relying on yourself and materialistic matter. If you believe I'm going to rely on my alarm to get up for Al-Fajr, that's not going to happen. You will fail miserably. You have to learn. We're going to seek Allah's help. I will never rely upon myself to worship Allah. Let me, if I do so, I'm relying upon myself and myself I'm a human and the human is weak, so I've relied on something weak, so I will be a miserable failure. Nema, I'm going to rely on Allah, the source of all strength, the source of all knowledge, the source of all wisdom, the source of all might. Allahu Akbar, then you will find that the worship becomes an easy matter for you. And I want to teach you something. Nasta'een comes from the word Aoun. And Aoun means help. Nasta'een means we're going to seek Allah's help. Listen to how important this matter is. To the point where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam watched his attitude and the great importance he gave this matter to the companions. He one day comes to Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu. He holds him and he says to him, Ya Mu'adh, inni uhibbuka fi Allah. Mu'adh, I love you for the sake of Allah. He's preparing him for some huge advice. He says to him, فَلَا تَدَعَنَّ دُبَرَ كُلِّ صَلَاةٍ Do not leave out after every obligatory prayer that you say, اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك. Please, Mu'adh, always after every salat, make sure you say, Oh Allah, grant me the strength and the ability and the power that I remain in remembrance of you. وَشُكْرِكْ And grant me the ability that I always remain grateful to you. وَحُسْنِ عِبَادَتِكْ And oh Allah, grant me the ability, because on my own I can't do it. Grant me the ability that I remain in perfect worship of you. Allahu Akbar, you need the help of Allah. Well, ulama rahimahum Allah differed in terms of when this dua is supposed to be said. Some say it's supposed to be said at the end of the salat, just before you make a taslim. And some said you say it immediately after the prayer. No matter what the case, it is both correct. The main thing is you say it. While acknowledging that, oh Allah, I could have never prayed this salat if you did not give me the help and the aid and support to do it. Allahumma a'inni. My brothers and sisters in Islam, wallahi, worship, it requires spiritual strength, not physical strength. 
I give you an example. There could be an 80-year-old and a 20-year-old young man. The 80-year-old made wudu today for Fajr, prayed Salat al-Fajr on time, read Quran after a Salat, fasted that day. Allahu Akbar, the entire day was worship. And our brother, the 20-year-old young man, full of muscles, didn't get up for Salat al-Fajr, no Quran, no fasting, no worship. But he's more stronger than him. I tell you, worship has nothing to do with physical energy and strength. Has nothing to do with it. Worship has everything to do with spiritual strength. And nothing, no one will be able to inject the heart with strength and ability to worship other than the maker of the heart, Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why you're in desperate need to ask Allah to allow you to continue to worship Him. Allahu Akbar. That's the idea. Worship is all about spiritual strength, not the physical strength. A person can build physical strength, pump into your body steroids and drugs and GH and what you like. Did that enable you to worship Allah? Did it change anything? It got you closer to Allah. It didn't do anything. You need strength of the heart. And there's no, there's no, there's no medicine that you can inject in the heart that will give you spiritual energy to continue to worship Allah. The only injection for the heart is وَإِيَّاكَ nasta'in To say, oh Allah, grant me the ability that I continuously worship you. So that's number one. Do not forget this dhikr and this dua. If you miss this dua, Look at its importance after every obligatory prayer, five times a day. If you miss it, Allahu A'lam what happens in your situation. But if you want that strength to pray the other prayer and the next, continue after every salat. Allahumma, a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Another dhikr that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that injects energy and strength for the worship in the heart is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Allahu Akbar. La hawl, meaning there is no way I can transfer from weakness to strength. And from despair to hope. And from whatever it is to strength. Wa la quwwata, and there's no strength except through Allah Azza wa Jal. And you know what's interesting? When the adhan is called, we are supposed to repeat after the Mu'addin what he says. Except in one part of the Adhan, we say something different. What's that part? The Mu'addin is saying, come to Salat, come to success. You don't say, because then that will mean you're saying to him, come to Salat. But he's calling you, come to Salat. Rather, what do we say? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. What do we say? Say it aloud. You know why? In context, this is what it means. The muaddin is saying to you, "Come to salat." You're told to say to him, "لا حول." Then impossible. I can't come to salat. I can't transfer from this lazy state I'm in into strength to getting up to a salat. And then you're saying to him, Wala quwa. I don't have any strength to come to a salat. And then you say, Illa billah. Except if Allah was to give me this strength. And that's why you say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And just imagine this that the Mu'addin makes adhan in the masjid, right? So this is someone sitting in the masjid in the front row. He's already there. Before the adhan, he hears the adhan. And from the front row, he's saying, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. الله أكبر. Look, you're there. You've come early. You're definitely going to pray. لا, even then, sit and say, acknowledge your weakness. Acknowledge your need for Allah. And say to that muaddin, I can't do it. I don't have any strength whatsoever to get up to our salat except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to give me permission to do so. Allahu Akbar. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, 
Whenever the servant says, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, Allah would say to him, Aslam abdi wa staslam. My slave has submitted. He's surrendered. He's given up. And that's what al hawqala which is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, means in terms of your relationship with Allah. It means you have submitted and surrendered. You know the arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal? There's something on top of it written and there's something underneath it written. On top of the arsh, Allah Azza wa Jal wrote, Inna rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. My mercy has overrides my anger. That's what's written on top of the arsh. You know what's underneath the arsh? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah kanzun tahta al-arsh. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah is a treasure under the arsh. Now you know what all this means. What is written on top of the arsh is how Allah deals with his servants. He deals with us with mercy. So if you had mountains of sayyat and you turn to him, he has promised upon himself that he deals in mercy and forgives our sins. And underneath the arsh, it is how we are supposed to deal with Allah. And the way we deal with him is to declare and to acknowledge to Allah that la hawl, we have no ability to move from laziness and weakness to strength in worship. And we have no power except by your will. When Allah hears this from you, he loves it from you. And he says to you, you have surrendered. You have given up. As a result, he grants you the ability to worship him. Being granted the ability to worship Allah is a gift that Allah only gives to those who want his help so that they continue worshiping him. So never ever think that you can do the worship alone. You always need the help of Allah. After the prayer, say, A'udhu. اللهم إني اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك and continuously throughout the day and the night لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to accept from us all والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.